Welcome to Getting to Global. I'm Josh Halpern, your host, looking at cutting edge solutions to build an e-commerce export strategy. Here we are. If you haven't heard of them, Rakuten's a powerhouse in Japan, if not the world. 18 billion USD market cap across 70 different business units, including Ebates, Slice, Viber, Viki, Mickey, and Mo. The last two totally made up. And they also have a professional baseball team and a soccer team in Japan. They have the largest share of the e-commerce retail space in Japan and about 2,000 employees in the U.S., many crammed into this large building in the heart of Silicon Valley. No small feat considering how much my house is to rent. One of the things that we'll be looking at is uh, the lifestyle of Silicon Valley. Free candy, free food. We've got curry and toasted coconut chips. Let's take a look at some other things. We've got the quintessential Silicon Valley ping pong table. You can't do anything creative unless you have a ping pong table. Here's a best-selling book uh, in Japan, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, Rakuten Copy. What we're going to do now is take a look at the office, we're going to meet the president of Rakuten USA. He is stationed in a cubicle in a sea of other cubicles to further articulate his accessibility as a head of a large organization. We wanted to uh, create open environment so that we can communicate each other. Yeah. Regardless of the uh, level or title, it really doesn't matter. For us to be a true global company, we made a huge step into the global world, which is to make our official language in English. The communications should be easier for the U.S. businesses to communicate with Rakuten people and also Rakuten people in Japan. We have over 90 million registered members wow. out of 120 million population. So either you are very, very old to use internet or a baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's over 40,000 uh, merchants in Rakuten, and then there's lots of the competitors there. So the, for the, uh, most of the US merchants newly joined Rakuten, uh, the first uh, struggle they will face is the getting lots of the traffic. Traffic, yeah. Yeah, and then my job is to, you know, talking with the merchants, what's their product, and then what's the best uh, way to expose their product on Rakuten, so that make sure that, you know, their product will be getting, like, good attention from the Japanese customers. If I set up a storefront in Rakuten, how is that different than selling through other marketplaces? Rakuten, it's more like marketplace. We have to create a pages with lots of the uh, information. What is your product? Who creates those product? And then why it's good like that? So we usually create a long page and then putting lots of the images and then video or something like that so that customers knows everything about your product. If your brand is unknown in Japan, but you can still explain your product in the pages so that the customers knows who you were, what the product is like that. What's interesting about being here, you expect it to be completely Japanese. You expect it to have just Japanese food. Yeah. How many days a week do you guys actually eat Japanese food? <laughs> uh, it's funny because it might be today. I don't know, what's the cuisine today? Japanese food. Hey, there you go. Hey. <laughs> That's a big part of my role is kind of liaisoning between those two cultures and setting expectations accordingly and kind of mitigating the inevitable yeah. frustration that arises yeah. on the U.S. side. Like timelines are much more extended. Mm -hmm. um, specificity around deliverables mm -hmm. is just a lot, a lot vaguer, a lot more vague than maybe a lot of U.S. companies are, are used to seeing. So mm -hmm. kind of having a certain comfort level with ambiguity Okay. Is, is important and it's a difficult thing in yeah. business because look, business is not a thing you want to be ambiguous about. You want to know exactly what's going on. If you take the market here, right? Uh -huh. Let's say this is the US and that's Japan. Sure. How do you get me over there? Uh, okay, this side's the US, right? Yeah. And this side is Japan. Um, so over here is, is the brand, let's say, who wants to sell into the Japanese market. Uh, Let's say that's your brand. Uh, and then on this side, you've, you've got Rakuten, right? The marketplace right. that's going to facilitate the transaction. So that's, let's pretend that looks like a web page that's called Rakuten. And on this side, 
you've got the customer in Japan who wants to make the purchase ultimately from the US brand, but he's going to make that purchase on the Rakuten marketplace. Okay. So the customer is shopping and he finds the product that he wants to buy on Rakuten. It's this US brand's product. And he clicks the button and he adds it to his cart and he checks out just the same way he would on an ordinary domestic marketplace transaction. So he's just bought the product on Rakuten. <clears throat> Rakuten is then going to send the order information back to the US, back to the, the US brand. So the US brand is going to get an order feed. It's going to have all the product information, the customer's information, etc. Um, and it's also going to have the customer's Japanese shipping address. Okay. So hmm. then it's up to the, the US brand to find a way to get that product over to the Japanese customer. And we have a couple of options to help them do that. Okay. The first option, the simplest option, is just for the brand to send it directly to their, their Japanese customer. Okay. So they've already got carrier relationships, right? Because they're selling in the US already. So right. they've so got a UPS account, they've got DHL, something. Something like that. Okay. So they just give it to the same delivery guy and say, hey, take it to Japan for me. That's the simplest option. It's not always the most logistically uh, optimized option, okay. or, or it's not always the most cost-effective option. But it's probably the simplest and most straightforward. Okay. A second option would be for the US brand to send the order down to a forwarder, also based in the US, okay. but that would be somebody who kind of specializes in Japan-bound shipments, and Rakuten has partners with those kinds of companies. Okay, so uh, cheaper, cheaper shipping costs, probably. It, you know, it really efficient. depends. Kind okay. of, it, it comes down to cost effectiveness, but it's on a kind of a, depends on the product category, depends on the volume of orders, etc. Okay. So then the US brand sends to the forwarder, and the forwarder sends the package over to the Japanese buyer. Then, so the part we haven't talked about yet is, you know, there are a lot of kind of just operational complications involved in selling over to the Japanese customer. I mean, this guy can't read English. He can't really call you and have a conversation about the product if he has to. Right. He can't get any kind of aftermarket customer service in the United States. So somebody has to be able to, to do the e-commerce operations in a way that's going to effectively sell to this customer. And that person is a service partner who Rakuten partners with to enable the U.S. brand to sell more effectively to the Japanese customer. Okay. And what do they, so what do they do in general? What's their kind of basket of services? Yeah, the basket of services is going to include all kinds of e-commerce operation support. So that's stuff like designing the page, uh, the page on the Rakuten Marketplace that showcases the brand and the products, okay. translating all that product content into Japanese, uh, product attributes, size, weight, etc. Um, branding and messaging, communicating that in an effective way to the Japanese customer, not just in terms of translation, but also in terms of kind of like culture and aesthetics and messaging. And okay. you know, these are operators who really know the Rakuten marketplace exceptionally well, and they know how to sell to Japanese customers. So they're kind of like the on the ground team. Okay. All right. So then that relationship is actually critical between the service provider it's it's absolutely and the critical i mean these are really an extension of the brand on the ground in japan they're the operators they're really kind of helping operate the brand in japan i mean there are a lot of ins and outs and a lot of variables like you pointed out so i mean the best way to work through all this stuff is just to have a consultation we'll talk about your business requirements expectations in japan you know okay. operational capabilities and kind of start to pull all these pieces together to kind of deliver support that's going to work for the specific U.S. brand who wants to enter Japan. Okay, so the only thing missing here, I guess, is the, uh, the smiley face on the Japanese consumer. Assuming all this goes well, they're going to be happy. Um, maybe some pockets with some money in it here. Mm -hmm.